day where we talk about life and the Lord. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, hi, I'm Tori. Nice to meet you. Last week, I gave a speech, talk, sermon thingy at my church's Young Adults Ministry. And what Young Adults Ministry is, is it's a group of 18 and 28 year olds who come together on Monday nights and we talk about God and we learn new things, ask many questions and build relationships. So I offered to speak at Young Adults and I ended up talking about my baptism testimony and the truth about Christ and the church. I originally had planned to eventually share my baptism testimony in a nice recorded sit down situation, but I feel like there's something really genuine about somebody sharing something from their heart, unedited, no cuts, just raw footage. So because the actual talk that I gave was very long, it was about 30 minutes in length, I went ahead and cut it into two parts so you guys could have a part one, which is this video, which will be the baptism testimony. And then if you're interested and you want to see the rest of the things I talked about, which was the truth about Christ and the church, that will be part two so you guys can see the full talk that I got to give and see a little bit of my beginning stages of learning how to preach. So without further ado, I'm going to stop talking and let you guys get right into it. Enjoy! I'll just go ahead and start. It all started when I was in fourth grade. <laughs> so when I was in fourth grade, my family and I were part of this church, um, which I'll refer to as my old church, uh, just to conceal its identity. And you'll see why later. But I was a part of this church that I call my old church. And my parents grew up um, without God in their lives. And they found Christ when they were in their late 20s. And they got married and found each other in this church that we were a part of. And then I was born and I was raised in this church. So it was in about fourth grade that I went to church camp for the first time. And if you guys have ever been to church camp, there's that like camp high you experience after and you're like, oh my gosh, I love God, he's amazing. And I was totally on this church high after church camp um, when I was in fourth grade. And I was like, you know what? I wanna get baptized. I wanna give my life to the Lord. And I was so on fire and so excited. And so a little bit of background before I get into that process. So at this old church, they did things differently. They believed in doing these eight core studies that you complete. You have somebody mentoring you through these studies, doing life with you. And through these studies, you learn more about the church, you learn more about culture, about different lifestyles, about yourself. And the idea behind it was, I mean, I had good intentions behind it because it was supposed to set you up for success. That when you get to the end of these eight studies, you will be ready for baptism. And of course I was a child, um, so I couldn't do something intensive like that. Um, I lived enough life to do an in-depth soul search, but they had something called character studies which were a light version of these eight core studies that they made the adults do. So fourth grade was rather young to start. They didn't really start baptizing people until junior high. And I didn't know why. I felt like, well, why not? I love God, so like, what's the big deal? So I told my parents and we arranged it. I got a mentor and I was on my journey. I started studying the Bible and we were doing these character studies. And so it was about a few months or so to a year of trying it out and something just wasn't going right. At the end of each study, they would give me a challenge to complete and I would try my hardest, but they just didn't seem to really be motivated to help me get to where I wanted to go. And it just kind of fizzled out from there. And I was so young that I didn't really see it as much. I just was like, oh, maybe I'm just not ready. Cool, I'm in fourth grade. So I'm very impressionable. I don't really understand a lot about the world yet. And so I stopped studying. So then I get to fifth grade and the school year starting and I'm motivated again. And I'm like, oh, let's try it again. So I try studying the Bible again and with new mentor, new curriculum, new everything. And they're even like, hey, we're gonna do different studies with you since you're familiar with the character studies. And I'm like, okay, whatever it takes. And after about another year, the same thing happened. I was told, you're too young. You don't understand what it means to follow Christ. 
this probably just isn't for you quite yet. You're too young. And I remember saying, okay, no problem. Sixth grade year comes. The same exact thing happens. Seventh grade year happens. Eighth grade year happens. And it's at this point that I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> because I have friends in the church that are now in middle school, which is usually when they start baptizing people, who didn't have a relationship with God at all, and I was watching them go through these studies with their mentors and somehow get baptized, and I was left behind, and I didn't understand why. And so I went ahead and took a break for a little bit and wasn't really sure what I was going to do when I got to high school. I was thinking maybe when I'm in high school, I'll try again. I don't know. So I get to high school, things are fine and dandy. I go to high school church camp and I'm like super on fire because high school church camp was better than middle school church camp. And I'm like, you know what? I'm ready. I think I'm old enough. I get this. I confess my sins to a bunch of people. I get a lot of things I've been holding it off my chest and I've decided I'm all in. Um, I'm gonna just keep going and not stop. And I'm gonna keep going with these studies and just pull through this time because I need to make this happen. I've wanted this for so long. And so I remember having just this excitement and this joy to get into it. And so I get a new mentor, her and I get along super well, and it's going great. And then some stuff happens with my mentor and she can't meet with me anymore. So I get a new mentor. And there's just this rotation of like four mentors I'm going through. And not only that, every time I get a new one, they're doing new studies with me. And I don't get why. I don't even know where in the Bible it says that any of this is possible. But I think I was at the age where I was starting to understand more about the, ch the church. And I was also learning more about having a relationship with God on my own because we were studying the Bible. And something just didn't seem right to me. Um, but I wasn't really ready to face that quite yet. So after about a year of studying or so, we're getting into my sophomore year of high school. And I try to get involved in ministry at the church. I sacrifice so many hours, so much time. And they wouldn't let me volunteer or do anything because I wasn't baptized. And I was like, well, this is great. I've been trying to get baptized for years. So I guess I'll try harder. And I talked to my mentors and I don't know what quite happened. There was definitely a change in me around this time, around sophomore year. I guess you can call it independence. But I remember being so afraid to go to my next lesson or my mentor time because I had decided I'm done. Like, this is it. It's been over a year and a half now, almost two years, and we've made absolutely no progress. So I go to this meeting we're talking like usual, and I kind of stalk her in the middle of our lesson. It's me and three other women that I respect a lot. So I'm in this room with these older women, and I'm like, hey, I have a very big concern to bring up. And they're like, yeah, what's up? And I was as eloquent as I could be as a high schooler. And I simply just said, you know, I've been doing this for a really long time, and I was just wondering when we would be done. What do I need to do to get this to happen? Because I've been waiting for several years and like we're getting nowhere. And I wanna know why we're changing this all the time. Is it something I'm doing wrong? Am I just not <clears throat> accomplishing the tasks right? Like what am I doing? Because I feel like I've done everything that I can. And I'll just never forget the way they looked at me when I said that. They were confused and they didn't really know what to say to me. And it was pretty quiet. And then one of them said, we just know you're not ready. And I asked them for the first time, when will I ever be? I've been doing this for so long and I just don't understand what I'm doing wrong. And they said, we don't know. So I just felt my stomach drop and I knew what I had to do. And I told them, I'm so sorry. Um, I'm blessed that you took this time over these past few years to be with me and to do life with me, but I just can't do this anymore. And I think I don't want to be a part of this church anymore either. And they were like, okay, no worries. If you ever want to find Christ again, you can come back to us. So I leave this meeting in a different place 
And my parents were a part of this church for several years. So telling them I just don't want to be a part of this anymore, I don't think it's what God wants, was really hard for them. But you guys, this is the one good part I think of it all, is around that same time when this was happening to me, they were having huge issues with leadership that they have been a part of for years. And in a matter of a few months, I ended my studies and my parents and I, like our whole family got basically kicked out of the church. For things, I mean, it's not like we did anything. It was just, you guys are not complying with our rules. You're not complying with what we expect of you. You're not serving enough. You're not doing this enough. And my parents said, we're done. Like we've given so much and this just isn't biblical. This isn't right. And my mom was mad about them not letting me get baptized too. <laughs> so mama came in and was like, oh no, no, you're not talking to my daughter that way. So <laughs> we all left and we ended up going to because my dad had you know, heard about it back in the days when they were still in tents. And I think he got baptized there when he was younger. So he kind of remembered it and was like, let's go see how it's doing. And you guys know what it's like now, it's huge. Um, <laughs> so he was like, whoa, this is so different from what I remember. But we started going to church my sophomore year of high school. And I was not in a good place. I was very upset with God. And my relationship with him wasn't doing so great because I felt like this rejection from the church was a rejection from God. Like, I'm not Christian enough. I'm not good enough to be in his kingdom, in his family. So I go and I hate it um, because it's big. And I was told at my old church that big churches were bad news, that you can't get saved at a big church, that there's not enough spirituality going on. But I later came to learn it was about management of people and not about salvation. But I'm there and I hate it. And I'm like, well, you know, if I'm here, I might as well serve and do something just to keep my mind off of things. So I get into tech ministry. And those of you that know me, I'm an actress <laughs> and I sing and I dance and all this stuff. I'm not a tech person, but something told me to go volunteer. So I volunteered and I was like, okay, God, whatever. I still acknowledge your presence, even though I'm mad at you and I'm gonna help your church. So I'm helping and I end up making really great friends. I meet people that are inviting and welcoming and uh, they're still in my life today um, and they're awesome. And I'm not gonna point them out because they know who they are uh, and they would hate me for doing that. <laughs> but <laughs> I love them so much. And I began to see a beautiful side of church that I hadn't seen before, that there was community, that there was love but I still was mad at God. And so I remember I was with my choir. We were doing a tour to San Francisco, eight hour bus ride. And I'm just sitting there contemplating life, uh, thinking about my future, uh, thinking about the last TV show I watched, pretty random stuff. And out of nowhere, guys, like I'm, I'm just sitting in my bus seat doing my thing. And out of nowhere, I hear this voice booming in my head and it says, come find me. And I take a, like a break real quick. I'm just like, what? And I look behind me in my seat. I could have sworn it was some kid behind me from the base section. I'm like, who in the world is that? Like it was a man <laughs> voice. It wasn't like my voice in my head, you know? It was someone else's voice. I'm like, okay, maybe it was the song. I don't know. So I don't think much of it. I go ahead and put my earbuds back in. I go back to doing whatever. And I'm looking out the window and then I hear it again, come find me. And at this point, chills all over my body. And I'm like, what? <laughs> no way. And this memory of going to Bible class and hearing about God talking to people kind of flows through and I'm panicking because I'm like, oh my gosh, what if it's God? Oh my gosh, I didn't respond the first time. And I'm like in my head, <laughs> totally like, what? And I just can't comprehend this, but I couldn't help but think, if this is God, I mean, what's the harm in responding? It could be anybody, it could be yourself, but like, what's the harm in responding to it? Just, you know, go for it. And so I'm like, okay, um, God? <laughs> like, and this is all in my head, not out loud, because then people would think I'm crazy. Um, <laughs> I just said, well, if you say, come find me, what do I do if I'm afraid? 
And that was my genuine sentiment. I actually wasn't mad at God. I think in that moment I realized I was just very afraid to try again. And I remember him telling me one more time, I promise. And I was like, but what if they say no? What am I gonna do? And I remember him saying, I promise you, if you try one more time, you will find me. I remember sitting in that seat, crying. And I knew what I had to do. I was terrified. And this was in March. It took me about six months to bring myself to a service and write on the card, I want to get baptized. But I knew what I had to do. So I did it. And I get this email like a week later from the pastor that says, hey, you have to meet with the pastor and talk to them before you get baptized. And my stomach dropped. I'm like, oh, not again. Oh, we're not doing this again. <laughs> so I don't tell my parents. I was worried about letting them down again by telling them I was gonna to try to get baptized. And I go to this meeting and I'm sharing my story with the pastor because we're talking about salvation and what the Trinity means and baptism to make sure I understand what I'm doing. And we agree on everything. And he says, share your story. And I share my story and his jaw just drops. And he's like, what church did you come from? And I tell him, and then he goes, no way. And I was like, yeah. Yahweh. <laughs> yeah. And he just said uh, something that totally changed my whole life and my perspective of Christianity and Christ. And that was, well, I want you to know, um, Victoria, that you were saved the moment that you gave your heart to Christ and when you were so little. Um, that you may not have, you know, gotten baptized, but God saw your heart that whole time, and he saw your pursuit, and he was pursuing you this whole time. It's very clear. And of course you can get baptized. We would love to have you. And within like the next two weeks, um, August 2nd, 2017, I got to get baptized. Um, yay, yeah. <laughs> And that was probably one of the best memories I've ever had, um, ever, like in my walk with God, because it showed his uh, faithfulness in that very, very hard time. And then began, well, being a Christian <laughs> and a disciple, which has come with its own trials. Well, that's my story as far as how I got baptized and how I found Christ, um, or how Christ kind of pursued me, rather. All right, guys, that is part one of this double video Taco Tuesday. Um, if you guys want to see part two, it'll be up right after this one. So go check it out if you want to hear more about the truth about Christ and the church, a.k.a. what I have learned from the experience you just heard about. If you guys want to see more about my personal walk with the Lord and what I'm learning from God, go check out my Instagram at mygodmoments. And as always, I hope you have an amazing week. Bye.